Greetings and welcome to Oro Commerce's video tutorial series. This is Daria with Oro Inc. and today we are going to explore buying options for both guests and registered users. You'll be guided through the Oro Commerce storefront and its functionality. In this video we'll cover creating a user account, creating orders, requesting a quote and reviewing purchasing history. Traditionally, B2B vendors work with verified buyers, so in most cases, B2C web store features such as guest shopping and guest checkout are disabled by default. However, Aura Commerce does support these features, and it's possible to enable some or all of these through configuration changes. The Aura Commerce storefront offers an intuitive interface that should be familiar to anyone who has purchased online before, and therefore shouldn't require much special training. This video will help bridge any gaps in understanding regarding B2B specific features, such as requests for quote and quotes. If your user has been granted administrative control of your company, then you'll have additional features available beyond what is described in this training. Please review the related video from our media library called Exploring Storefront Possibilities as a Company Administrator to get an insight of the advanced capabilities and permissions a company administrator has in a storefront. In this tutorial, we'll navigate you through a sample storefront, demonstrating key elements such as main navigation and search bars. Then we'll proceed through a standard 5-step checkout process as a guest. Next, we'll show you the first steps needed to register and sign in. And finally, we'll introduce you to the My Account menu, where you can easily manage your personal information. In addition, you'll be able to view and manage orders and quotes, and negotiate requests for quote with sales representatives. Let's get started with an overview of the Aura Storefront interface and the basic options available to a customer. Aura Commerce is flexible enough to be customized to meet any aesthetic requirements. However, the major elements that make up a web store are almost always the same. Let's get closer to the key elements of the Storefront menu. On the top left of the page, you can see the user menu links to your personal account registration or signing in, in case you have an account already. On the top right of the page, there is another navigation menu. By default, the menu displays a phone number, the link for a live chat, and a link to learn more about free shipping, which directs to a landing page. Also, if multiple localizations are enabled for the storefront, you can select the desired language of the UI elements and content. This bar and its content are customizable through the admin panel. Below there is a quick access menu that provides access to the most frequent or important actions, such as creating orders, requesting quotes, and placing orders through a quick order form. The search bar nearby provides the fastest solution for finding the desired product. Simply type in a search keyword containing a product name or product reference numbers, SKUs, or any other information, and click Enter to view the results of your search. The main menu located below is the key navigation bar that contains items for sale grouped into catalog categories. To the right of the main menu, there is a shopping list that stores all the products you've selected for purchase. In the top left corner of the storefront page, there is a breadcrumb bar that shows the location of the current page in the menu. You may also define a specific set of records displayed to you by setting corresponding filters and selecting the necessary values. Sorting options are located on the left, above the Filters section, enabling the records to be sorted alphabetically by price or relevance. Layout options are located on the far right, above the Filters section, enabling you to select the preferred way of the products to be displayed on the page. The available layout options are Tiles, Details, and Compact Details. If you have a lot of records, they all may not fit one page. In this case, use the page navigation bar to customize the default configuration. It shows the page you are currently on, the total number of data pages, and the total number of records. Scroll down to the footer of the storefront page to find links to the company's contact information, privacy policies, and other details, all of which are customizable and can be configured differently for each specific website. As you've now got acquainted with the storefront basic options, we can briefly introduce you to the process of checking out. Keep in mind that guest capabilities in the storefront depend on the configuration. 
This means that while guest buyers can be unable to have complete access to all website features, they may also be configured to have no permissions to purchase products. Now we are going to demonstrate the configuration with full buyer access to the shopping list, enabling them to purchase the products they came for regardless of whether they have signed in or not. As an example, let's purchase a 100 credit card pin pad readers to illustrate the steps to complete checkout. As mentioned previously, we are going to buy 100 credit card pin pad readers with an item number 1AB92. You can find the desired item by browsing the web store or typing in the product name or product SKU into the search bar to speed up the process. To locate our sample product, a credit card pin pen reader, we are going to type in its name into the search bar and press Enter. The page with the results that match our query displays. Here is the product we need. Put 100 in a quantity field and click Add to shopping list. The shopping list serves as a basket for your items, helping you to collect your products. In our case, 100 credit card pin pen readers are the only products we came for. Let's navigate directly to the shopping list and proceed to creating an order. Click the down arrow in the shopping list button. A list with all your shopping list displays. As we've got just one, click its View Details link to get redirected to the corresponding page. Double-check the details of the product you are buying, like the quantity and the availability of this product in stock. At this stage, you can request a quote or create an order directly. Let's request a quote first. For example, as we are buying 100 credit card pitband readers, we already have a special discount which starts from purchasing 100 items. Let's check if we qualify for some additional discount, for example, an extra 5% of the total order. Click Request a Quote below the shopping list header. Fill in the name, email address, corresponding comment, and specify the target price you would purchase the item at. Enter $57.76 for the item target price, instead of the declared $60.80. Click Update and then Submit Request to receive a tracking number of your quote request. You'll receive a feedback from a sales representative to your mailbox. As we see, they didn't offer us any extra discount. So we can proceed to the checkout. Click Create Order on the bottom right. Fill in the billing information, including your first and last names and the billing address. Select the ship to this address checkbox if the shipping address is the same as your billing address. Click Continue. As you can see, the shipping address is automatically populated with the data you have just input for the billing information. In the Shipping Methods section, select the preferred method for the products to be shipped. Click Continue. In the Payment section, select the way you are going to pay for the products. Click Continue. In the Order Review section, check the SKUs, Quantities, Price, Subtotal, Shipping and Total codes that you have provided again to make sure your order is absolutely correct. At this stage, you can still update the order content, if needed, by clicking the Edit icon. Also, you can provide additional order options. Click the Do not ship later than field to select the date on which the order expires, for instance, December 30th. Enter your company's internal purchase order number for reference. This may help sales representatives process your order faster. In the Notes field, provide any additional information relating to the order. If you no longer need the shopping list after the order is complete, select the checkbox Delete this shopping list after submitting order. Otherwise, the shopping list will continue to exist after you place the order, 
so you can reuse it if needed. Let's leave this checkbox unselected to be able to access the shopping list later. Click Submit Order. You'll be given a number to track the status of your order online or use it as a reference when contacting the seller. Also, as you can see, your shopping list is still available, keeping all the data you have provided before submitting the order. On top of the basic capabilities provided to guest users, registered users have several additional options, such as reviewing the statuses of all their requests, along with the whole purchasing history and other valuable information in the My Account menu, directly from the online store website. To view the additional options and privileges available to the sign-in user, we'll need to register an account first. For this demonstration, I'll give you a brief overview of the first steps you need to take to start working with your own user account in a store. These include registration, signing in, and requesting a new password. On the website landing page, click Register in the top left corner. In case there is no such link, which depends on the configuration, click Sign In instead to trigger the pop-up form. Then click Create an account at the bottom of the form. The registration form displays. Enter the required details in the provided fields. Let's create an account for J. Smith from the Aura company. The company name may not be mandatory if predefined by the configuration. For the password, make sure to include an uppercase letter and a number while setting a password. Once the details have been provided, click Create an account. To complete the registration, check your email and click the Confirm link. Here is the email. Click Confirm. Alternatively, a sales representative may contact you shortly to proceed with the registration. Sign in with the credentials you have provided. Select the Remember Me checkbox to save your credentials, so that next time you visit the website you can automatically log in. Also, you can always reset the password if you happen to forget it. For more information on how to reset a password, please check out the Aura Commerce documentation library. Click Sign In. After you've passed all the necessary steps required for a new account registration and have signed in to the system, You've become an authorized customer with a certain set of possibilities which we'll introduce you later in this tutorial. The menu for you as an authenticated user should now have your name, a link to your account management section and the sign out button. However, depending on the storefront configuration, the menu can also be displayed like this. Here you have the possibility of moving to any section of your account details straight away. As a registered user, you have instant access to all the benefits the online store can provide. You can easily drop selected products into the shopping list and leave it for a while, knowing that it's automatically saved and is waiting for your return. You can manage your personal contact information, billing and shipping addresses in the My Account menu. You can monitor the status of your orders, quotes, and requests for quote, as well as submitting them directly from your account menu. Now let's return to the order with 100 credit card readers that we have placed as a guest user previously in the video. I have preliminary created an identical order after signing as J. Smith, and now we'll use this order to check all the options in the My Account menu and the management permissions offered to you. Click Account in the User menu on the top left of the page. Your account menu has several sections. The My Profile section is responsible for storing all your personal contact information and is divided into the Account Info and Default Addresses subsections. Account Info enables you to view your name, email, the company you are working for, your current status, and update this information if necessary. Though keep in mind that the ability to edit your account information depends on the permissions that correspond to your role. These are defined by your administrator. When editing your account details, you can amend your personal details, 
email address, your first and last names, the date of birth and password. The default addresses subsection shows all the addresses you have provided. The primary one is displayed by default. Here you can see the billing address that we provided when creating our sample order. It has been automatically saved and placed here. Additionally, you can manage default addresses in the address book by clicking the Manage Address link at the bottom. Alternatively, you can open the address book by clicking the address book link in the menu on the left. Here, you can view both your company and personal addresses, add a new address and modify the existing ones, check the location on the map or delete the saved address. With the help of the action buttons on the right, you can filter the records to select the ones you need from the entire data pool. Click the filters icon to open the filtering bar. Using filters, you can narrow down the list of specific products, showing, for example, only the addresses registered in Germany. To manage the available filtering fields, click the plus icon to add, remove, search or reset the filters to the default condition. Refresh the data being displayed to bring up the most recent content by clicking the refresh icon. Click the settings icon to define which columns to show in the table. You can manually select the columns by clicking on the checkbox next to the required field. Use the Select All or Deselect All buttons to show or hide all the columns in the table. Or click Reset to clear the customization. Change the order of the columns by clicking the ellipsis icon next to the name of the column you wish to move. Hold the mouse button and drag the column to the required position. Clear the filtering and table columns customization and return to default settings by clicking the Reset icon. Reset applies to all filters, records per page and sorting changes that you have made. The User section on the left gives you access to view the existing user's personal contact information. Additional permissions depend on your role and configurations. Click View to open the Details page of a particular user. The Request for Quote section enables you to view all the submitted RFQs and check their statuses. Let's open the RFQ we have just submitted. It's the one with 100 credit card pin pen readers. We are going to check whether the sales representatives have agreed to give us an extra discount that we asked for. Click View next to the selected request for quote to open the details. Under the Notes section, you can see feedback provided by the sales representatives. Unfortunately, we are not given the discount. You can either print it, keep negotiating, or cancel the request by clicking the corresponding links on the top right of the page. Let's consider another example, where the feedback we have received was positive. The seller can provide us an extra 5% discount if we purchase 200 items of credit card pin pen readers. To accept this condition, click the Provide more information button, type in your reply, and submit the request again. Once sent, the sales representatives will create a corresponding quote to reflect the changes we have agreed on. You'll be able to view this quote under the Quotes section of your account menu. Additionally, you can create a new RFQ directly from the Request for Quote page. Simply click Plus New Quote on the right, fill the form, and submit it. The Order History section stores the information on all your orders, both open and already submitted. Here you can check the order number and the day it was created, the address your order was shipped to, the total amount, or other important information. Let's find the order we have submitted and view its details. Click View to open the Order History page. The order information and product item are valid. You can print the order by clicking the Print Order button. 
if you want to purchase the same items, you don't have to create a new order from scratch. Just click the Reorder link below the order header to copy the existing order and proceed directly to the checkout. The Reorder link is also accessible from the Order History section next to each order. In the Previously Purchased section, you can view the list of all the items you bought from the store in the past. By default, previously purchased products are sorted by recency with the newest items displayed first. The visibility of this section depends on the configuration of a particular website. The Quote section is here to assist you in negotiations with the sales representatives on requesting a better price, more convenient quantities and additional services. Once you submit a request for quote and get a positive response, or after a successful negotiation through another communication channel, a quote is created. All the quotes are located in this section, enabling you to view, accept and submit an order based on the offered prices and conditions. Previously, we have agreed on the condition to buy 200 card readers and receive 15% discount off the total order. The sales representatives created a corresponding order that was placed here and now we can view its details by clicking View at the end of the row. Review the quote details and if you satisfy, click Accept and Submit to Order on the bottom right of the page. You'll be redirected to the next page with the quote information and the product list. Let's put 200 items. Back to Quote list returns you back to the page of the quote. The Submit button moves you to the checkout step. If you are not ready to complete your order, it's automatically saved in the Order History section, enabling you to view and manage it anytime. That was an overview of the key storefront features and possibilities available to a customer, both to a guest and authenticated user. We've shown you the registration and signing in procedure and guided you through the basic steps of the standard checkout process. We have also explored the properties and benefits of the My Account menu that enables you to view and manage your personal data, submitted orders, quotes and RFQs. Also, you can find more detailed information on how to place an order as a guest in a related tutorial from our media library called Configure Guest Checkout Options. For the details on how to manage requests for quote and create orders from the Aura Commerce Management Console, consider checking out the Aura Inc. media library for the relevant tutorials. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay informed of the latest tutorials and webinars.